welcome back, guys, to Friday Factorio Facts with me, Massive Dynamic. And we have a big news today. Friday Facts number 378 is out. Trains on another level. I haven't read this yet, but I did peek ahead just a little bit, and it's pretty exciting. So let's get right into it. It says, hello, the code refactor of Rails presented last week is great, but the motivation for such a task wasn't quite just some shape changes for Rails. As explained last week, we can now define any kind of rail shape, and we had some very specific shapes in mind all along. Over or under. We want multi-level crossings for trains, but how? Bridges or tunnels? At first, it would seem like going underground is a safer bet. We already have experience with belts and pipes doing that. Simple. We draw the entrance and the exit. The middle is magically connected, and that's it. The second layer of rails should also be able to use curves and rail signals, otherwise it would be quite limited. Sometimes you already want to interact with items inside of underground belts. With trains, this would be a lot worse as they can run out of fuel, stop at signals, etc. Building curves, rails, or interacting with trains inside of a tunnel probably means we need to be able to walk inside. If we walk in a tunnel, biters and robots should be able to as well. If tunnels can have curves, how could you tell which tunnel entrance connects to which exit when looking from the outside? Tunnels over water don't quite feel right. Drawing tunnels would be surprisingly difficult as we would need to do some expensive masking that Factorio isn't currently capable of, and more. So, sounds like they're going for bridges. The idea of an elevated rail seems to have much more potential, although drawing in an upper layer certainly won't be easy either. Also, you just want to boldly see all of your trains in their full glory instead of hiding them somewhere in a cellar. Yeah, I agree with that. Such an idea would consist of a rail ramp, the transition between the lower and upper layer, elevated rail, tracks buildable above most things, rail support, elevated rails would need supports at some intervals. Okay, so here's uh, kind of an example. Elevated rail system pieces. These were the gray box graphics to test the gameplay of the new rail shapes and the ramps before the final graphics were created. Yeah, obviously they just needed something to test it on. That's pretty cool. I like the idea. Elevated rails. I know you've already scrolled down to see the ramps instead of reading this, but it just felt weird not to put a paragraph here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we didn't do that. Uh, I didn't, this is as far as I've scrolled right here so far. I haven't seen anything more than this. Now that is pretty cool looking. That is, I like it a lot. That's going to be my screenshot for sure for the thumbnail. So when we thought about the visual design with Albert and Arendelle, we wanted the ramp to be heavy and industrial, but at the same time, not quite perfectly stable and rigid. After multiple iterations, we have arrived to this combination of a solid concrete base combined with an upper metal structure. All right. Pretty cool. The concrete base helps clearly show where the ramp touches the ground, while in contrast, the metal part has a lot of holes, so you could see entities placed behind the ramp most of the time. The metal is painted red, as mostly the only other red entities in Factorio are related to trains. It helps the elevated rails belong to the train family and stand out in the factory as they should with their height. Okay, so they painted everything train related red, which is pretty cool. Looks good. I, wonder, I guess it's not colorable by the player, uh, but the red color does match the standard train that you get. Anyway, the rail ramp is the new longest entity in the game at 16 tiles long and four tiles wide. Wow. So you'll need to consider where and when to place it. It can only rotate in four directions. Okay, that makes sense. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, because diagonals would be, I can imagine diagonals would be very difficult. But it's very cool. So what, this must be the support. The rail support follows the style of the ramp, but with the difference that it can be rotated in eight directions. Okay, why would you be able to rotate it in eight directions if your track can only go in four directions? Oh, I guess the ramp only goes in four directions, but the track, once the track is in the air, can go in the eight directions, apparently. Interesting. Here's the footprints. Okay, it has a roughly four by four collision box with the rotated ones all having the same shape. Okay, 
So the straight ones and the rotated ones have the like plus shape. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, this is nice too. Yeah, okay. So they did. They do allow diagonal rails in elevation. Wow, that's pretty cool. The elevated rails can be built between ramps held by rail supports along the way. The elevated rail can be constructed above anything except tall entities, rocket silo, roboport, big electric pole, etc. They have exactly the same rail shape as the new ground rails do, and signals can be attached to the elevated rails. Oh, cool. They attach right to the right to the like fence or whatever they rail. I don't know what that is. It's almost like a roller coaster um uh, ride bar, whatever. But anyway, um let's see. There are fences. Oh, they are fences, which help visually distinguish the elevated rails from ground rails. You can also see how they disappear to track on cra track crossings. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, the, yeah, the rail disappears when you cross. Pretty cool. Very cool, actually. Uh, okay, so here's a segment of track with a, a, a bridge over it. Very nice. I like it. Wow, that's really going to save on the intersections in practice replacing a colliding connection inside of a t-junction with a ramp going around it can already help a lot oh yeah that is fantastic wow that's gonna look cool too look at that oh man this brings back my younger days of uh of uh hobby racing slot car racing trains etc nice with the ramp being long, and since we have only two layers, building a fully multi-level junction can get rather large, but the throughput potential is massive. Thanks for using my name. It's worth noting that it's not just the level separation that helps. It's also the fact that we don't need chain signals, so we can shorten the distance between normal rail signals a lot, as we don't need to guarantee there's enough space for a train behind the junction. Yeah, that's really cool. That is really awesome. I can't wait to play with this feature. Okay, so what do we have here? We have... Oh, station with... In and out. Without crossing each other. Oh, nice. Specifically, in arrays of train stops, having the exit and entrance on different levels is a game changer. Yes, it is. Although this is double-headed trains. But it does make double-headed trains worth playing just to do that. That's really cool. Okay, so here we have some kind of... This thing is way too big to fit on one screen. Let's see. So that... What are we looking at? Oh, how it goes over water. Oh, cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Concrete right over the water. Nice. This is a very special patch that draws under terrain which is visible only in places where the ramps or supports touch water in case you decide to route your rails through a lake because why not islands can become opportunities for multi-level crossing oh that's very cool oh this is awesome looking i love it building something elevated can be done with the rail planner. Either you can press a keyboard shortcut to switch the destination layer, or you can start the rail planner on a ramp, rail support, or elevated rail. I'm sure the rail planner is going to be magic for this. As you know, I am not a fan of the rail planner. Maybe they fixed it. I don't know. But one day, Kovarik said, why doesn't the rail planner just snap to the rail you're pointing at? Thank you so much. Okay, Kovarik, you are a genius. I've known this for a long time, but finally you said something that actually makes sense and since that day it does rail planner just connects to any rail you pick including between ground and elevated rails this is also massively helps mitigate issues related to the rail planner having more directions oh yeah thanks for using my name once again and that that is fantastic the rail planner finally will be useful oh that's great the rail planner can often find connections you wouldn't even expect to be possible which can be mesmerizing to play with. Okay. Um, now that does look really cool. That, that, that does look really cool. I like that. Okay. This is going to bring spaghetti to a whole new level. 
um, and double-headed trains uh, are going to be the way to go. As a result, this can happen a lot quicker than you think. Oh, yeah. That looks really sweet. Okay, conclusion. Allowing trains to cross paths on different levels has been one of the most requested features for a very long time. We'd always left, felt it makes perfect sense, but trains in Factorio would rarely ever get into serious enough throughput issues to justify adding elevated rails. The expansion changed this landscape quite a bit, though. If we expect players to generally build larger factories than in the base game, train throughput could become an issue, and since you are expected to travel away from the home planet, having a train system that doesn't deadlock would be more important than ever before. It's not hard to guess that implementing this would require a lot of time and working on the expansion behind closed doors allowed us some breathing room where we could make bigger experiments. Between Boss Kid with the mechanics and Postula with the drawing code, just the programming took a few months. On the graphics side, we could reuse a lot of initial blender setup from the rework of ground rails, but that didn't get us very far. The ramps were simply large objects while the rail supports are a hive of optical hacks as they need to fill their collision boxes. Both the ramps and supports were reworked multiple times to finally get the result that would look and function well. Especially because of the elevated rail fences, the required sprite count grew very rapidly. This made me use all the tricks in our Blender book and even add completely new Blender Python tools that mostly help with organizing and rendering large amounts of outputs. I got the final iteration to about 90% completion, but then it just became too much. Jersey already had experience with rail graphics, so I had asked him to help me by finishing the last details and texturing, and then he handed all the signals and remnants again. Then he handled all of the signals and remnants again. It's hard to overstate how much bravery and mental fortitude was required to just jump into the blend file of the elevated rails and I'd like to thank him for that again. You can probably see from the above images that he did excellently. Between Arendelle on concept art, me on most of the 3D process, Jersey on finishing, and together with Albert on re-evaluating multiple major iterations, the graphics took about nine months to make. Perhaps we could have taken some simplified route trying to make tunnels work, but we believe the elevated rails offer better gameplay beyond comparison. Yet again, we can confidently say that properly focusing on some features in the expansion rather than trying to shove more things into 1.0 was a very good decision. All of the elevated rails will be only available with the expansion executable. Their technology can be researched using production science packs without the need to go to space or any planets. Elevated rails will be one of the standalone official mods next to quality and space age so you can play a vanilla like game with just the elevated rails for example or other mods can just ex depend on elevated rails as always we're looking forward to all the feedback you are about to elevate ha. okay so that's pretty cool so so basically i think what they're saying there if i'm reading that correctly is that 2.0 <clears throat> offers is basically a mod pack I guess all the elevated rails will be only available with the expansion executable. Their technology can be researched using production science packs without the need to go to space or any plants. Elevated rails will wait. Elevated rails will ele, elevated rails be will one. Well, no, I think that should be elevated rails will be one of the standalone official mods next to quality and space age. Okay, so yeah, it it is 2.0 is basically a mod pack, a set of standalone mods. I think that's what they're saying. So you'll have a quality mod, a space age mod, and a elevated rails mod apparently, and who knows what else. Okay, I think that's how that reads. So that's really cool, guys. That is really cool. Some really good looking graphics some great potential for new base structures and just awesome spaghetti so i'm looking forward to playing that and i hope you guys will stick around with me and watch my factorio town series we're on season three right now we're working towards blue science so join me there otherwise we'll see you around keep playing factorio we'll see you next time bye bye